So this is question one from Within Subjects Designs. Fatigue effects cause worse performance when participants are tested a second time because people start to do worse at the task when they get tired. Practice effects cause better performance when participants are tested a second time because people start to do better once they get more practice. So this one is B. In this question, I'm testing 100 participants. The 100 participants are writing a resume and taking a self-esteem test at time two, time one. Then one week later at time two, the participants are taking the same self-esteem test but without writing a resume. So time one is the resume condition and time two is the no resume condition. And what I'm saying is that um, when the participants are being tested in the no resume condition at time two, their self-esteem is still high because of the fact that they wrote the resume at time one. And this is called a carryover effect because um, the effect that the resume had on the participants at time one is carrying over to the no resume condition at time two. At time one, the resume is increasing the participant's self-esteem. And at time two, their self-esteem is still high because of the fact that they wrote the resume earlier. So it's called a carryover effect. Whenever the whenever a treatment is received at time one, and that treatment is still having an effect on the participants at time two, it's carry it's a carryover effect. Um, question three. Which of the following will make the effects of practice and fatigue equal across conditions A and B? Um, if all participants go through the AB order and no participants go through the BA order, then all 100 participants um, are experiencing no practice or fatigue in condition A, and they're all experiencing practice and fatigue in condition B, which means um, there's no practice or fatigue in condition A, and all of the practice and fatigue is happening in condition B, and that's definitely not equal practice and fatigue across the two conditions. It's definitely not um, equal. What if 30 participants go through the AB order and 70 participants go through the BA order? Well, um, 30 participants are experiencing practice and fatigue um, in, in condition B, and 70 participants are experiencing practice and fatigue in condition A, which means that um, um, a larger number of participants are um, having practice and fatigue in condition A, and a smaller number of participants are having practice and fatigue in condition B which means that overall um, there's more practice and fatigue in condition A and less practice and fatigue in condition B, which isn't equal. The practice and fatigue is not equal across the two conditions in this case. But what about choice C? In this situation, 50 participants are experiencing practice and fatigue in condition B at time two, and 50 participants are experiencing practice and fatigue in condition A at time two, which means that um, the number of participants who are uh, um, experiencing practice and fatigue in condition B is the same as the number of participants who are having practice and fatigue in condition A, which means that um, practice and fatigue is having an equal effect on conditions A and B. So C is correct. Now what about question four? I say that I'm testing the effects of classical music on recall with 100 participants. And all 100 participants are taking a recall test with classical music at time one. 
and all 100 participants are taking the uh, recall test with silence at time two. And the classical music group has a mean recall of 7.5, and the silence group has a mean recall of 4.5, which means the classical group did do better at the recall test than the silence group. And it's saying which of the following can explain these results. Choice A says that um, since the participants did better at the recall task in the classical condition, and they did worse at the recall task in the silence condition, then that means that classical music clearly improves recall. And that's actually not true in this experiment because, um, well, it could be that the participants did well at time one because of the classical music, but it could also be that the participants just did poorly at time two because they were getting tired. It could just be a fatigue effect at time two. <clears throat> so A isn't correct. Um, what this one, what choice B is saying is that, that the reason that the participants did better at time one with classical music and worse with silence at time two is um, definitely because of fatigue. So what uh, what this is, is saying is that there's definitely no effect of classical music and we can be um, absolutely sure that the only reason that there was a difference between the two conditions is because of a, of a fatigue effect at time two. And this choice B is not correct because um, we can't be completely sure that it's a fit fatigue effect because it could actually be that classical music did help the participants at time one. We can't completely rule out the possibility that classical music improved recall. So B is not correct. Um, but choice C is saying that it could have been, that the results could have happened because of either reason. It's saying that, that the reason that there was a difference right here is because it could be that classical music did help the participants at time one. It could be that fatigue made the participants do worse at time two, or it could, or the difference could have appeared because of both reasons. It could be that classical did help people at time one, and people did do worse at time two because of fatigue. So choice C is correct, because choice C is saying that it could be either reason, and we don't know which one is correct. It could be the effect of classical music, fatigue, or both. And the main problem with, with um, not counterbalancing and running everyone through the same order is because um, we end up in this situation where we're not sure what actually happened. We're not sure if the classical music had an effect or if it was just an effect of fatigue, and we can't make any type of conclusion. This uh, question is saying that that we're studying the effects of classical music on recall. The 100 participants are still getting classical at time one and silence at time two. So everyone is still going through that order. We still have the same results where the mean recall while listening to classical music is 7.5 and the mean recall while listening to silence is 4.5. And it says, which of the following is a possible explanation? Um, well, it could be that classical music did have an effect because these results are showing that people did better at, at recall while listening to classical music and worse at recall while listening to silence. That could be because classical music improves memory. But that's not the only possible explanation because we know that the silence condition is happening at time two and it could be that the reason people did so poorly in the silence condition is because they were getting tired. It could be an effect of fatigue. So it's actually A or C, which is E. Question six is saying that 
were uh, still doing that same recall test with 100 participants. Um, but now um, they're being tested with silence at time one and with classical at time two, which means that the order of conditions has been switched around. And we're still getting the same results where the participants have a mean recall score of 7.5 in, um, in the silence condition and a mean recall score of, um, oh, I'm sorry, the, the participants still have a mean recall of 7.5 in the classical condition, and they still have a mean recall of 4.5 in the silence condition. Um, I shouldn't have said group because um, it's not a between subjects design. We actually don't have a classical group and a silence group. It's just one group going through um, both conditions. It's a within subjects design. So um, it looks like I might have made that mistake on all of the questions, but it's good that I noticed that. So I should have said that um, the mean recall score in the classical condition is 7.5, and the mean recall in the silence condition is 4.5. So what's a possible explanation for these results? Well, once again, it could be that classical music is having an effect on memory. It could be that the classical music is improving um, memory and it, um, so it could be A, but we have to realize that participants are being tested with classical at time two. So the reason that, that the participants did so well while listening to classical music could just be that um, at that point in time, they had more practice with the task. So it could be that they went through the silence condition first and did more poorly because they didn't have very much practice yet, and then they, they reached the classical condition and did better because um, at that point in time they did have more practice. So it could be A or B, so it's actually D. I realize that I'm actually going to need to change these choices a little bit for question 7. Question 7 is saying that all 100 participants listen to um, classical at time 1, and they all listen to silence at time 2. And um, at time 1, while listening to classical music, the mean recall is 7.5. And at time 2, while listening to silence, the mean recall is also 7.5. And it's saying, what could explain these results? Um, well, once, ag once again, we have another experiment that's not counterbalanced because all participants are going through the same order. Um, so this time we have to find out why the participants uh, performed equally in the two conditions. Once again, it should say silence group and classical group because it's just one group of people being tested in both conditions. Um, let's make uh, choice A. Um, the effect of classical music on memory and practice. I'll see if it'll let me do this. If not, then I can go here. So is it the effect of classical music and practice?
the effect of classical music and fatigue. Carryover effect of the classical music from time one to time two, or is it A um, and C? Let's think about this. The, the, um, the participants had all had classical at time one and silence at time two, and the, the recall performance was equal across those two conditions. They did equally well with classical and silence. And what could explain that? Well, it could be that um, the classical music does improve memory. That uh, ordinarily participants would do better with classical music and worse with silence. But it could be that um, since the um, since the silence condition was always at time two, it could be that the participants did uh, better in the silence condition than they would otherwise because of having extra practice. So this is a possibility because um, if classical always happens at time one and silence always happens at time two, it could be that um, time one, at time one you have classical music and at time two you actually have silence uh, plus practice. Um, so it could be A. In other words, I'm just saying that it could be that at time two, uh, the effect of practice boosted the silence condition, um, bo boosted their score up higher to the point where it was actually equal to the classical music score. What about classical, the effect of classical music and fatigue? Well, that's not possible because, or it's at least not likely because if we had classical at time one and silence at time two and classical music had an effect, meaning um, classical music did improve memory at time one, um, if we had had fatigue in the silence condition at time two, what would have happened is the silence the recall of the silence condition would have dropped even lower and the difference between the classical and silence conditions would have been um, even larger. Um, so it can't be B because the, the two, the recall of classical and silence was equal. This is our effect of classical music. Um, Classical music is improving memory, so the participants do better when they're listening to classical music and worse while they're listening to silence. But um, if silence is, I mean, if classical is always at time one and silence is always at time two, then what could be happening is we have the effect of classical music right here, but the um, the fact that silence is happening at time two is um, bringing up the, the silence average up to where it equals the classical average. So the practice, the effect of practice. at time two might bring up the silence average to the point where it equals the classical average.
this is one possibility why the two means ended up being equal. So that's why A is a possibility. But the reason why B isn't a possibility is because um, which uh, B says let's see, uh, classical music and fatigue is because if that was true, if fatigue was happening at time two, the fatigue would bring down the silence average and make the difference between the two means even larger. Like this. It would have become an even larger difference. And that's not what happened. But we have another possibility. It could be a carryover effect. Because one reason why the, t why the recall was equal between the two conditions is because it could be that the participants listened to classical music at time one and that helped their memory and the participants were still under the effect of the classical music at time two in the silence condition and, <clears throat> and the classical music also improved recall at time two. That's, that's a possibility. So it's actually A and C. It could be classical plus practice. I mean, it could be the effect of classical music and practice at time two, or the carryover effect. So I told you I changed the answers. Now what about uh, this one? Now the experiment is counterbalanced because 50 people are getting classical and then silence, and the other 50 are getting silence and then classical. And we still have the same result where the classical music average is 7.5 and the silence average is 4.5. Um, so which of the following could explain these results? Well, the fact that it's counterbalanced should rule out the possibilities of practice and fatigue. Because counterbalancing is meant to control for these two things. Which means that we should be able to conclude that this difference appeared because of the effect of classical music. So if it's if the study is counterbalanced, the effect the difference um, can't be explained by practice or fatigue. It can only be explained by the effect of classical music on memory. That's why we want a counterbalance. The whole point of counterbalancing is to eliminate these other possibilities. Um, what do we have here? Oh, it looks like here it's not um, fully counterbalanced because 70 people are getting one order and the other 30 are getting the other order. It looks like 70 people are getting classical followed by silence and 30 people are getting silence followed by classical. And it looks like the, the mean recall of classical is 7.5 and the mean recall of silence is 4.5. Well, it could be because classical music improves memory. That's one reason why we might have a difference right here. But another possibility is that the um, the 70 people who um, who had silence at time two might have been fatigued once they reached the silence condition. And um, if those 70 people were getting fatigued, those 70 people would bring down the um, the mean recall of the silence condition, and that might be why people did so poorly in the silence condition. Or, I mean, that might be why the average of the silence condition is so low. What I'm meaning is it could be that um, the 70 people led silence at time two um, got tired in the silence condition, and and those 70 people brought down 
the mean of the silence condition because of their fatigue. And you might be thinking, well, wouldn't the 30 people who got the other order um, and had classical at time two, um, wouldn't they get tired in the classical condition and bring down the average of the classical condition? Well, it could be that those 30 people did get tired in the classical condition and, and did bring down that average somewhat, because, but that's only 30 people, which means that um, those 30 people wouldn't bring down this average as much as the 70 people would have brought down this average. So um, here we have 30 people getting fatigued and bringing down this average, and we have 70 people getting fatigued and bringing down this average. And um, 30 people um, don't, won't have as much of, of an effect as 70 people will. So these 70 people will drag down this average more than these 30 people will drag down this average, which is why we might have ended up with this difference right here. So we're seeing that fatigue is a possibility. Um, fatigue is a possible explanation. Now, why wouldn't practice be a possible explanation? This might be one of the harder explanations to follow, so um, I think that a picture might help. So one possibility for why this average was 7.5 and this was 4.5 is because classical music does improve memory. So it could be this difference right here is actually the effect of classical music. But there's also a second possibility. It could be that classical music um, really does have no effect on memory. So it could be that ordinarily classical and silence would have equal recall. But it could be that since um, in this experiment, 70 people had silence at time two, which means that this average is being dragged down by the fatigue of 70 people. And it could be that we know that only 30 people had classical at time two, which would mean that this average would be brought down by the fatigue of 30 people. And 70 people um, are heavier than 30 people are, meaning um, 70 people would have a bigger effect on this average, and the 30 people would have a smaller effect on this average. So it's like this is a heavier weight that's pulling down this average more, and this is a lighter weight that's dragging down this average by less, which means that this average will go down some, but this average will go down by more. And what that would do is that would um, make it look, well, it would create a difference in recall between the two conditions because this, is, this average is being dragged down further than this average is, which creates a difference between classical and silence. So it could just be that fatigue, <laughs> well, I think this makes sense. And you might be thinking, well, why isn't practice a possibility? Well, we know this. Um, so practice was one of the choices. Well, we know that 70 people are getting silence at time two, and 30 people are getting classical at time two. If there had been a practice effect, which would mean 
um, better performance at time two than at time one, then these 70 people would have brought up the classical average. I'm sorry. In that case, these 70 people would bring up the silence average because of the practice at time two. And these 30 people who had classical at, at time two would also bring up the classical average because of practice. But once again, 70 people have a stronger effect on an average than 30 people do. So the practice, um, the practice of these 70 people would bring up this average by a larger amount. And the practice of these 30 people would bring up this average by a smaller amount. And we would have ended up with something like this. We would have ended up with better performance in the silence condition and worse performance in the classical condition. Um, a practice effect would have led to a reverse or opposite result like this. And we know that this isn't what we see in our in the question, which means that practice is not a possible explanation. So, because yeah, classical did better and silence did worse, which means that it's either a a true effect of classical music, or it's fatigue. It's it's e a or c. Um, this was this might have been the hardest question, or it's at least the longest question. We have a counterbalanced experiment where 50 people are getting classical and then silence, and 50 people are getting silence and then classical. And it's asking if the participants are getting tired at time two, what will happen to the results of the experiment? This one is saying that the 50 people who get silence at time two will be tired in the silence condition and they'll bring down the average of the silence condition and create a difference or create a larger difference between the silence and classical conditions. So this is, this is what um, choice A is saying. Choice A in question 10 is saying that the, um, that those 50 people who are getting, um, silence at time two, that those 50 people won't do very well in the silence condition because of their fatigue. And those 50 people will bring down the silence average and make the difference in recall even larger, like this, an even bigger difference. What B is saying is that um, the 50 people who get the silence condition second will be tired by the time they reach the silence condition, which means that they'll do more poorly in the silence condition, and they'll bring down the silence, they'll bring down the average performance under classical music. So what what um, number, what choice B is saying is that the 50 people who get classical at time two will bring down the classical average because of their fatigue. And because of that, the difference between the two conditions right here will end up being a smaller difference, like this, from here to here. So the difference will end up being like this instead of like this. And what, um, what the third choice is saying is that 
But the 50 people who get the silence condition second will be tired in the silence condition, and they might do more poorly because of being fatigued. But also, the 50 people who get this classical condition second will be fatigued by the time they reach the classical condition, and those 50 people won't do, will do more poorly in the classical condition than they would otherwise. And it's saying that um, both means will be brought down by the same amount, and the difference between the means won't change. This is what choice C is saying. It's saying that we have the average performance of classical and the average performance of silence, like this. This is the effect of the classical music. It's saying that the 50 people who get classical at time 2 will be tired in the classical condition, and those 50 people will bring down the classical average. But the 50 people who get silence at time 2 will be tired in the silence condition, and those 50 people will bring down the silence average. And since the two averages are being brought down by the same amount, the difference between them won't change. We'll still have the same size of the difference between the mean recall of the two conditions. And this actually is correct. This is what we would expect to happen. The counterbalancing, the 50-50 counterbalancing, should make it so that the two averages drop by the same amount and the difference, the um, the difference between the two averages won't change, which is what we want because we don't um, we don't want the size of the effect to change. So this is actually what we would expect right here, which means that C is correct. And we did one more question. We did question 16. It says, one researcher has 20 people do a recall test four times. They all, they all go through the same order. Classical at time one, silence at time two, silence at time three, and classical at time four. Um, if we consider classical to be um, condition A, if we consider classical to be condition A and silence to be condition B, then this is the order that they're going through. It's A, well let me draw, it's A, B, A, B, B, A which is actually reverse counterbalancing because um, it's reverse counterbalancing because each um, person goes through A, then B, then each person goes through B, and then A. So um, um, you go through A, you go through the A, B order first. And then you go through the reverse order second, which is B, A. So that's reverse counterbalancing. And reverse counterbalancing is um, a type of subject by subject counterbalancing. So that's correct. And the second researcher has 20 participants, but this researcher is splitting the group in half. And um, 10 are getting the classical. I mean, 10 of them are getting classical and then silence, 
and the other 10 are getting silence and then classical. So 10 of them are getting the AB order and 10 of them are getting the BA order, which is, well, when you randomly assign participants to different orders, it's a cross-subjects counterbalancing. So the correct answer is B.